All right, okay, so let's go ahead and get started here with the example one. We want to go ahead and identify the slope and the vertex of the graph. And we do have the absolute value equation of f of x equals negative 2x times negative 2 times the absolute value of x plus 4. Now, the goal in this case, guys, is to actually identify our slope and identify our vertex. Now, whenever it comes to slope, slope in this case is represented by our a value. And if you guys recall from the formula, y equals a times the absolute value of x minus an h plus a k. a in this case is a number that's in front of the absolute value, so our a was go is going to be uh, negative 2. Since we are graphing, this is actually going to be negative 2 over 1. Once again, slope represents the rise over the run. Uh, next thing I want to go ahead and identify here is the vertex. The vertex in this case is represented by our points H and K. So in this case, guys, H is the value that is inside of the absolute value here. Uh, in this case, we actually don't have a number inside of the absolute value. So we're going to go ahead and assume that our H is 0. And our K in this case, guys, is going to be a 4. So we have our vertex, and we have our slope, in this case, slope. So we're going to go ahead and graph this. Now, one thing, guys, one thing special about the vertex in this case is that the vertex represents our starting point, our starting point here. So when we graph, we're going to go ahead and start off with this point, and from there, we're going to go ahead and use our slope. So let's go ahead and graph the point 0. 4, and 0, 4 is actually going to be found here. And our slope in this case is negative 2 over 1, which means that we're actually going to be going down 2 and right 1. So it's 1, 2, and then 1 to the right. My graph in this case, guys, is a little bit off, so uh, I apologize for that. So what I do to one side, I, I'm going to go ahead and actually put it on the other. So I actually do 1 and 2, 1 to the left. And once again, this is because absolute value, um, the sides in this case mirror each other. So they're the same distance from our vertex here. And I could actually keep on going. I could continue counting 1 and 2, and then 1 to the right, and 1 and 2, and 1 to the left. And we could just keep on going. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just stop there. And I'm going to go ahead and connect my lines to create my absolute value graph here. And in this case, guys, I do want to go ahead and point out something. In this case, our slope was negative. Our slope in this case, slope here, is negative. So that's the reason why our absolute value graph is flipped. So that's the first one. And that is the first one. And vertex in this case, guys, is going to be either the highest or the lowest point in the graph. So let's go ahead and do this next one. And here's the next one. Go ahead and just move it a bit. So in this case, once again, guys, we want to go ahead and identify the slope, which is A. And we want to go ahead and identify the vertex, which is H and K. So A in this case, guys, once again, it's represented by the number in front of the absolute value. So that's going to be a 5, a negative 5. So A in this case, negative 5. Okay. So in this case, um, we have our point H and K. Um, so H in this case is represented by the number inside the absolute value which is going to be um, a 2. But whenever we're identifying our h in this case, guys, it's actually the opposite. So instead of it being a positive 2, it's going to be a negative 2. And the k in this case is the number that's on the outside. And those are our points. So we have the vertex and we have the slope. One thing, whenever we do use the slope, it's going to be negative 5 over 1. So this is telling me we're going to be going down from our point. So let's go ahead and plot this point, negative 2 and 4. 
So negative 2, 4 going up. So we have our point here. And our slope in this case, guys, let me just label this as a vertex. Our slope in this case is negative 5, 1, which means we're going to actually go down 5. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and then 1 to the, one to the right. All right. And here's our new point. And we're going to go ahead and repeat the same process from our vertex here. So we're going to go ahead and go down 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and then 1 to the left. And there we have a new point. And like I said, guys, we could actually keep on going. We could keep on going here. Um, but we're actually going to go ahead and stop there and graph our points here. Graph our points. All right. On the next ones, guys, I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to identify the slope and the vertex. I won't be graphing it. So here is the next one. And once again, we want to go ahead and identify the slope and the vertex. So slope in this case, guys, is actually the number in front of the absolute value. And if you take a look at this here, we actually don't have one. I mean, we do, but it's invisible. It's an invisible one. So a in this case equals a1. Now our vertex in this case represents the value, the point h and k. h in this case, the number that's inside the absolute value, k is on the outside. But h in this case represents our opposite. So instead of it being a positive 6, it's actually a negative. And since we're not given a k value here, you could actually add a 0 there. And that would be my vertex and my slope. So go ahead and solve uh, example three on your own, guys. I mean, example four, I'm sorry. Go ahead and graph example three. And if we move on to example four, go ahead and work this one out on your own. Find the slope and the vertex.